This video was sponsored by Ubisoft. Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle is out now for the Nintendo Switch, and you can learn more at the link in the description. I never thought we'd see the day where Mario and the Rabbids cross over, and I especially never thought we'd see the day where Mario stars in an XCOM-style tactical turn-based squad shooter, but here we are. And it's a dream come true for me. But just like other games of its breed, it's also pretty tough, especially when you're trying to get the gold trophies on every map and completing the game's brutal bonus challenges. To help you on your treacherous journey through the corrupted Mushroom Kingdom, I've worked with Ubisoft to create two guides. One for each of the game's characters, and one for dealing with each of the game's bosses. Today's character guide will go over each of the game's playable characters, along with an analysis of the game's weapons, effects, abilities, and skill trees. We're going in the order that each character joins your party, starting with the obvious. Mario! Mario's unique in that he's the leader of your party in the main single-player modes, and you have to keep him on your team at all times. This would be pretty awful if Mario was bad, but thankfully he's a well-rounded offensive powerhouse. His greatest asset is high damage in all forms, and his greatest weakness is his movement, where he has arguably the worst mobility upgrades in the game. Looking at Mario's weapons, he has a great mix of mid and close range options. The blaster hits for consistent and predictable damage rate at good range. It doesn't do anything particularly special, but it's dependable and works at a long enough range to complement Mario's slightly worse movement. Mario's secondary is Melee, a giant hammer that in my opinion is one of the best secondaries in the game. It only hits when you are one space away from the enemy, and then adds splash damage branching out from the enemy once it gets hit. This weapon provides the most raw damage from a single attack, great for taking out single enemies or finishing off a boss. Obviously, you only want to use it if you're sure that you can defeat the enemy next to you, and if not, you're going to open yourself up to a free attack on the next turn. Just a quick tip for new players, any weapon with splash damage can friendly fire your own teammates, but a single target weapon like the blaster will automatically be dodged by your team. Mario's two possible weapon critical effects are on the weaker side in my opinion. Bounce can launch enemies back and potentially add extra damage if you knock him out of bounds, but my preferred effect for him is Honey, which prevents enemy movement for one turn, rendering melee enemies useless and maybe stopping a ranged enemy from reaching you as well. Mario's special movement ability is the Stomp Jump, which is fantastic. While all characters can dash in enemies as a free connection into their regular movement action, Mario's the only character that can use the team jump to land on an enemy for damage. You can upgrade how far you bounce off of an enemy's head with this power, which can also make up for Mario's lack of other movement upgrades compared to the rest of the cast. Just keep in mind, you cannot dash into the same enemy that you're using the stomp ability on in the same turn with Mario. You'll have to choose one or the other, or split your two different movement attacks into different targets. Mario's techniques unsurprisingly fit his theme, damage and more damage. Hero Sight and its equivalents can be the best technique in the game, allowing you to fire at an enemy during their turn if they move within your weapon range. For those familiar with XCOM, this is your equivalent of the Overwatch ability. But unlike Overwatch, you don't get an aim or critical penalty when you take this shot. When you first start, the Hero Sight shots do less damage than a regular attack, but they can be upgraded in the endgame to deal more damage than a regular attack, and upgraded so that you get two shots during a single enemy turn when the effect is active. You might have an enemy that's in cover, but by activating this ability, they'll be forced to get blasted the second they step out if they're in your range. The only downside to Hero Sight is that it can be horrible versus enemies that can move and attack every time you hit them. The biggest example is the Smasher archetype, where you might want to consider not using Hero Sight at all unless you're sure that you can defeat your enemy before they chase you down on your own turn. Mario's other technique is End Power, a powerful ability that allows characters in a radius around you to hit for higher damage for one turn. Most battles I find myself dropping this on my first turn so that the whole team grouped together gets the full effect and can hit hard out of the gates. It stacks with other reactionary shot abilities and in general is just one of the best buffs in the game. He doesn't have a lot of tricks up his sleeve, but Mario is tough. Also, because you have to use him in every fight, it's worthwhile spending the money to upgrade his weapons first whenever you unlock a new batch. Next up is Rabid Peach, who serves as a sort of antithesis to Mario. Her damage is on the weaker side, but she has great defense and arguably the best healing ability in the game. We've talked about the Blaster, which is her primary, but her secondary weapon is my favorite in the game, the Sentry. The Sentry deploys a car that explodes in a big radius when it reaches the target that you've selected. It's the second highest damaging secondary, and it's great for damaging a close group of enemies. It can even go through pipes and create some amazing trick shots. If the target you want to hit is too far away, it moves on its own to chase a target in between turns. Worst case scenario, you can throw it out at an enemy really, really far away, and it can potentially draw enemies out of cover trying to shoot at it. 
Rabid Peach's critical effects are Push and Honey. Push is very similar to Bounce, where it can provide some extra damage if you bounce something out of bounds, but again, I prefer Honey. Rabid Peach's movement ability, Double Dash, isn't exactly unique, but it's helpful in the beginning of the game. She starts by being able to dash into two separate enemies in one turn, which is good for chip damage. Other characters can dash into more enemies than her after upgrades, and her dash isn't even close to the strongest, but it's decent at the start. The real selling point for this character, though, is the techniques. Shield helps absorb a respectable amount of damage from the weapon-based attacks, and it upgrades well into the late stages of the game. With it, you can afford to leave Rabbit Peach at the front lines, activate the effect, and absorb some damage that your other characters might have taken instead. Also, she has Heal. This is a simple area of effect heal that adds a percentage of each character's total health to everyone in close range. It has a pretty slow cooldown time even with upgrades, but it maxes out at an impressive 70% heal. Probably the best team heal in the game. Letting a single character die eliminates your chances of getting a gold trophy, so having a strong healer is crucial. Rabbit Peach is in my opinion good on almost every team. You almost always want at least one healing option, and having access to the sentry makes her surprisingly well-rounded. For the final character that you start the game with, we have Rabid Luigi, a truly chaotic character with access to a ton of effects. He has arguably the best dash in the game and has a very high critical rate, but suffers with weapon damage and has the second lowest max HP in the game. The Borb is a weapon unique only to him. It's basically a regular blaster with worse damage, but a much higher critical rate. In fact, in the end game, you can even get Borbs that hit criticals with every single shot, 100%. This is crucial with Rabid Luigi's critical shot selection, where he's able to get more effect choices than others. My personal opinion for the best effect in the game is Stone, which stops the target from moving, attacking, or using techniques, which essentially combines three other existing effects into one. The only downside besides low damage is that most bosses are immune to effects, meaning that you'll only get the extra damage from your criticals and not anything else. His secondary is the Rocket, which in my opinion is the worst secondary in the game. It hits at an insane distance away and deals splash damage, but the damage itself is horrible, dealing only half the damage that the sentry does later in the game. It's good for area of effect chip shots and blowing up cover, but it's a tough weapon to utilize well. Rebid Luigi's special movement ability is amazing, the Vamp Dash. Every time he dashes into an enemy, it automatically gives them the Vamp special effect. This effect allows you to heal a percentage of the damage that you deal to an enemy, even the damage that you just dealt with the dash. While it can be hard to use Rabid Luigi as a full team healer, Vamp actually can work for enough healing on some stages to support a full team. Once Vamp is activated, anyone on your team can hit a Vamped enemy to heal, not just Rabid Luigi. Also, you heal as a percentage of damage that you could have dealt, so even if the enemy only has 10 HP left, you'll heal damage based on your weapon's full attack strength. At full upgrade, this Vamp allows you to heal 100% of the damage that you deal, which is amazing in the late game. Also, Rabid Luigi can upgrade to the highest individual dash damage, which is 160 in a single dash. Moving to techniques, Rabid Luigi's first one is Super Barrier, a special that prevents you from getting hit by effects like honey, push, burn, etc. And it can also be upgraded to deflect various types of damage as well, like a slightly worse Rabid Peach. It isn't the best barrier in the game, but it does help Rabid Luigi survive with his low HP in tough situations. His second technique, Weaken, does more of the same but in the opposite way. Instead of making you stronger against attacks, it decreases the strength of enemies around you. In a crowded map, this can be a good way to help the entire team tank damage. The only downside is that you often have to be in harm's way when you activate the ability in the first place. While the lack of pure damage can be annoying, Rabid Luigi's utility with effects and the pseudo team healing with dash make him a great partner on teams with two other offensive units. Our first unlockable unit is Luigi, and he is a monster. Does that look like the face of mercy to you? Look at these pros. Highest attacking range, great damage, best movement in the game. But his one con is colossal. His HP is a joke. We just talked about how Rabid Luigi has the second worst HP in the game. He maxes at 500 HP. Luigi, after his two expensive HP upgrades, only gets to 335. He's made of paper. True to his cowardly nature in other games, you want to keep Luigi out of any fight you can. In some cases, a single attack from a boss can KO Luigi immediately. However, he ended up being my favorite character in the game and won me a high majority of my gold trophies, so it's a matter of using his fragility responsibly. His unique weapon is called the Precision, and it's the game's sniper. It has the best range in the game, and it hits harder than the blaster. Being able to snipe enemies from across the map while staying out of their range is huge. 
His secondary is also the Sentry, which I've already talked about how much I love. In terms of weapons, I think Luigi has the best primary secondary combo. He also has access to Bounce and Ink as his effects. Ink prevents enemies from using weapon attacks on their next turn, but they can still move around. Overall, I find this effect to be even better than Honey, saving your team from crucial damage every time it activates. His special movement is the Double Jump, which allows you to perform two team jumps consecutively in one turn. While this is somewhat situational at first, it is the best ability for racing through those reach area maps in record time. Luigi also has access to the most ground movement, and the highest team jump range, and the highest movement bonus after going into a warp pipe. This map, for example, has a 10 turn requirement to get a gold trophy. I cheesed it with Luigi in 3. And of course, Luigi comes with two stacked abilities as well. Steely Stare is another Overwatch style ability like Mario's. The difference is that this one actually does hit for less than 100% damage even when fully upgraded. But upgrades also allow you to fire up to three times instead of Mario's too. Combined with the precision's insane range, you can often set this ability and pick off enemies you never would have imagined you'd be able to hit during their turn. Because of that added distance, this is an ability worth upgrading very quickly. His second technique, Itchy Feet, increases movement spaces for everyone in close range to you. Not only does this make Luigi's already absurd movement range ridiculous, but it allows your better dash characters to reach more targets, it allows your non-attacking partners during escort missions to move further, and it also makes low movement characters like Mario get respectable movement. As a final note for Luigi's upgrade tree, his dash damage is pretty poor, so I didn't upgrade it at all. But on the flip side, he's one of the best candidates in the game for maxing out that high ground bonus, dealing more damage if you're at a higher spot than your enemies. Luigi is the glass cannon of this game. His peak is so high, but you have to have someone along that can help keep him alive. Onto the back half of the roster is Rabid Mario, a high-risk, high-reward character that specializes in area of effect damage. His ground movement and close range damage are fantastic, but his techniques are underwhelming and he has zero long range attack options. The Boom Shot is his primary, which deals a high amount of damage in a cone-shaped area in front of you. Its range is pretty poor, and it can be a dangerous weapon to use because it can hit your own teammates with friendly fire. It's still amazing for groups though, and somewhat redundantly, his secondary is the Melee Hammer. It's amazing as a compliment to Mario's blaster, but with Rabid Mario, it just gives him a second close range attack for slightly more damage at slightly less distance. His effects are both fantastic, with access to Vamp and my personal favorite, Stone. His movement ability is what cements his character as such a haphazard one. The Boom Dash. This dash deals a cone of damage out to all characters surrounding the one that you just dashed on. Once again, this is a situation where friendly fire can be really annoying to avoid. However, if everyone has cleared the area, the Boom Dash can add an amazing amount of extra damage to a group when combined with Rabid Mario's solid dash damage and triple dash upgrades. He's the definition of a one-man wrecking crew, and Magnet Dance is the perfect ability for him. It draws all enemies in a radius around you towards Rabid Mario. Pulling enemies in is a great first step before a colossal turn where you boom dash multiple times and then end with one of your two area sweeping close range weapons. His bodyguard ability on the other hand is one of the worst in the game. It allows you to absorb damage from enemy dash attacks, which can eventually be upgraded to shield against a tiny amount of weapon damage. Unfortunately, weapon damage is way more common to be hit by than dash attacks, making this the worst shield ability in the game. In close range situations, Rabbit Mario deals some of the most damage in the game, but at the expense of leaving yourself wide open and having no ranged threats. Use responsibly. I knew Princess Peach was going to have a role in this game, but I can't say I expected the strength of her character in Kingdom Battle. She is a tank. Her HP is by far the highest in the game by a mile, the anti-Luigi. She can heal every turn, and she has a great way to take damage for the rest of the team. On the flip side, her movement is some of the weakest in the game along with Mario. She also uses the Boom Shot, but is at least another decent user of the weapon because she can afford to take a hit or two with her high HP after you've been forced into close range. Her secondary weapon is the Grenade Duck, another somewhat disappointing secondary with damage output equal to the rocket. It has less range than the rocket, but also less aiming restrictions because it can be lobbed over cover. Her effects are actually some of the weakest, offering her Fire or Ice. Ice disables techniques, while Fire deals a little extra damage and can be spread to other enemies as they're running around. Peach's special movement ability drops a small area of effect heal to everyone around her after she lands a team jump. While the healing is significantly less than Rabid Peach's, you can use this every single turn because it has no cooldown. 
Like Rabbit Peach, it also heals herself, which works well when combined with her role as a damage absorber. Speaking of absorbing damage, let's look at her techniques. Starting with Protection. This ability allows Peach to absorb a portion of damage from the ally she uses it on. What's great is that you can activate the ability first when your group is together, then split up and the effect will still linger until the end of the enemy's next turn. The math usually works out in your favor, and this can save you a lot of HP if used correctly. Her other technique is one that all of the Mario Universe characters share, the ability to fire on the enemy's turn. Unfortunately, Peaches is the worst of the four in my opinion because she has the worst range, and because if you don't position her correctly, you could haphazardly fire and shoot in the direction of a teammate. It still can be good if you put her on the front lines, but it's something you have to be smart about instead of set it and forget it like the other plumbers. Peach is an easy character to like, but it is a shame that you can't run her in a team with Luigi in the single player mode, which would make the perfect combo. But since you can't, my favorite set with her has been Rabid Mario, running a ridiculous frontline team that hits everything at close range, heals, and tanks. Our final Rabbit for analysis is Rabid Yoshi, who has great ground mobility and is great against bosses, but only has mediocre damage output. He'll be your first introduction to the Rumble Ring, a sort of chain gun that works just like the blaster, but with a wider spread for potential damage. Your minimum damage is lower than a blaster, but your damage peak is a lot higher, so it's great if you want to gamble. Unfortunately, these also have a lower critical chance rate than any other primary weapon, capping at 30% in the endgame. His secondary is the Grenade Duck, which we just discussed, and he has access to Push and Stone as his critical effects. His special movement ability is one higher than Rabid Peach, a triple dash. Like Rabid Peach, his dash damage max is a little unimpressive, but he can be upgraded to dash a massive total of five different enemies in one movement action. I feel like other dashes are more powerful with less targets, like Rabid Luigi and Rabid Mario, but if you can get the quintiple dash off in one turn, it is pretty crazy to see. His best technique by far is the Outer Shell, which creates an incredible barrier that eventually absorbs all damage up to two hits a turn. This can be beat by a lot of small attacks, but one-on-one -on -one against a large enemy like a boss, this can keep you invincible for a crucial turn to deal damage without fear of getting hit. His other ability, Scaredy Rabbid, is the opposite of Rabbid Mario's Magnet Dance. It pushes enemies away from you instead of pulling them closer. It might just be my playstyle, but I feel like I used this technique less than any other in my entire playthrough. When trying to meet that turn limit to earn gold trophies, there just weren't a lot of opportunities where I felt like I wanted to push enemies away instead of finding a way to deal with them head on. Overall, Rabbid Yoshi is fairly well rounded, with Outer Shell being the highlight of the character for me. And finally is the non-Rabbid version of the Dino, Yoshi. This is the last character that you collect, and of course, is incredibly powerful. Yoshi's strength is in dealing massive damage, with its only true weakness in my mind being that Yoshi is very similar to Mario. This is the first character where we've already talked about both weapons, but Yoshi comes with the Rumble Ring and the Rocket for a secondary, with Freeze and Ink available for critical effects. Yoshi's movement ability is a sort of weird blend of Mario and Rabid Mario, the Ground Pound. While you can't land on an enemy like Mario can, when you hit the ground off of a team jump, you do some serious area damage, maxing at 130. This is great for clearing a wide area of cover, but as always needs to be done cautiously to avoid friendly fire. It's also nice because you can damage enemies even if you can't completely reach them. You just have to land somewhere somewhat close to put on the hurt. Yoshi's techniques are both very similar to Mario's as well, which is good, since both of Mario's abilities are very good. Egg Beater works just like Mario's upgraded Hero Sight, dealing two reaction shots of damage to enemies that move in your line of fire. Just like Mario, these shots can be upgraded to deal over 100% damage with each shot, and Yoshi's can actually be pushed slightly higher than Mario's with a maximum of 150% damage per shot. Super Chance is the most appealing ability to Yoshi, allowing any ally touched by the effect a free critical hit for the turn. This is similar to M Power because criticals naturally boost your damage, but it's also very helpful against non-bosses because you get that free effect. Paired with an area of effect attack and strong effects like stone or ink, you can keep an entire enemy squad locked down for a turn without being able to seriously harm you. It's also good synergy with the Rumble Ring itself, turning that tiny critical rate all the way up to 100%. Yoshi is fantastic, boosting team damage, firing reaction shots, and damaging off of a jump. As long as you're cool with handling two characters that do exactly that on the same team, you'll be dealing a ton of damage all around. Overall, one of my favorite things about Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is that every character feels viable. Some shine more than others on specific maps, and some are definitely more helpful on average, but I found myself using every character at least a couple times on each of my hunts for gold trophies. Hopefully this guide was helpful for you, either learning about the game or playing through these characters when you have the game yourself, but if you're looking for more help, I'll be releasing my complete guide on all the game's bosses soon in a second video. 
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Ubisoft, for supporting the channel. And I'll see you guys next time with more Nintendo content.